what Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. It's tempting for us to read this metaphorically, thinking that the cross here means mild persecution or annoyances or some sort of opposition, as opposed to literally being killed. But as we read Acts, we're made aware that this passage should be taken literally as well, and we should be prepared for the very possibility of martyrdom. One of the major themes in the book of Acts is that Christians continue the ministry that Christ began. We see this in the many parallels between the life of Christ and the life of his disciples. And this is clear today in our reading, Acts chapter 21. See that Paul finishes up uh, his time in Ephesus as an emotional goodbye and he heads for Jerusalem. Uh, And the parallels continue throughout the passage. In verses 4 and 12, we see the people trying to persuade Paul to stay away from Jerusalem. Just like Jesus' disciples many times tried to uh, dissuade him from fulfilling his faith. Uh, In verse 13, Paul says this, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, And when he would not be dissuaded, he gave up and said, The Lord, we gave up and said, The Lord's will be done. Again, these words, the Lord's will be done, spoken by the people, are an echo of Jesus' words in the Garden of Gethsemane, aren't they? Uh, This uh, reliance and trust in God's will that even though death is coming, uh, it's within his hands. It also reminds us of uh, Jesus' words to Peter uh, when Peter says, You can't die, you're the Messiah. Uh, Verse 27 and 29, we see a crowd stirred up with false accusations. In Jerusalem, in the temple square, just like it was for Jesus on many occasions, and especially at the end. Uh, And the shout of the crowd in verse 36, get rid of him, has us thinking about the cry of crucify him, when Jesus stood before an angry mob in Jerusalem. In Acts, we see these parallels between Jesus and Paul, and between Jesus and the other disciples, over and over again. Uh, Not just their death uh, and rejection, but also their lives. Why do we see this? Are these an attempt to lift the apostles up to some sort of Messiah-like status? Uh, And are we making too much of these parallels? Well, the answer to both of those questions is no. Uh, Luke, the author of Acts, draws attention to them because he remembered the words of Jesus he wrote down in his gospel. Whoever wants to be my disciple must take up their cross. Then... Luke, after writing these words in his gospel, witnesses with his own eyes that the destiny of the apostles was similar, so similar to that of Jesus. Rejection, suffering, and death. And Paul even gets this, doesn't he? He writes in his letter to the Philippians that famous line, to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live is Christ? Well, he understood that as a disciple, his life would in many ways mirror that of his saviour. A life marked by miracles and profound teaching and growth, and, uh, but also uh, suffering, betrayal, death. But the parallels don't end there. To die is gain, Paul says. Just like Jesus rose, so too would Paul. Not in a bodily form three days later, but in a bodily form in the new creation. To die is gain. We immediately join Jesus in paradise and then one day we will be here in a restored body on a restored earth with our Lord by our side. So the takeaway from, uh, from this for us is this. Jesus said, take up your cross. Be willing to lay down your life for me. Acts shows that this is a reality that the lives of Christians parallel that of their saviour. If the world rejects me, Jesus said, it will also reject you. So be prepared for suffering, opposition, rejection, persecution. But hold on to the promise that to die is gain. Uh, And keep boldly proclaiming the gospel. Because we know that we have a destiny and a future 
that is greater than anything here on this earth. To live is Christ, to die is gain. And everything in between, we are covered by God's love, protection and sovereign rule in our lives and the world around us. So trust that. Trust his message and keep up the good work telling that message to the world no matter what may come. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you didn't give us a bait and switch and try to drag us into your kingdom with false pretenses. We thank you that you made it clear that the reward is great and beautiful and amazing, life to the full. Life isn't meant to be. But in the meantime, there will be troubles. Lord, we pray that you will empower us through these troubles, uh, that we may be able to stand firm to your truth, regardless of what may be thrown at us, knowing that we are living lives that parallel yours, both in our life, death maybe, but in our eternity. You, the first fruits of the resurrection will raise us from the dead, that we may experience life to the full forever. Empower us as we go about your gospel mission. Uh, help us to be brave and bold, trusting in you every step of the way. In your name we pray. Amen.